Hey everyone, welcome to part one of Project Cobalt. This is not one of my client builds and that's because this is the first sponsored build I have ever done. So I'm very excited, it's sponsored by M-Wave Australia, Gigabyte, Fractal, G-Skill and Sapphire and you can see that we have some incredible components here but for me this build is definitely going to be all about the mods because it's a theme build and I'm going to be modifying the Fractal Define S. I can't wait to get started, but before we do, just a brief overview of the main components. So we have the Intel Core i7-6700K, the Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 7, 32GB of G-Skill Rip Jaws V, the AMD Sapphire Nitro Radeon R9 390, two Samsung 850 Evo 250GB SSDs, the Fractal Edison M, the Fractal Define S, and the Fractal Kelvin S24. Now I have to be honest, this is only the second time in my life that I've ever installed an AIO, but that definitely doesn't mean that this build is going to be any less fun, because out here I have been preparing to start the mods, gathering all of the materials that we are going to need. And you can see there's a lot of paint here, some of that is actually for other projects, but before we get into the materials, the theme for this build is metals and a beaten up robot, so hence the name Project Cobalt. Now for the metals, I want as many exposed different metals as I can possibly get with different surfaces, brushed, sandblasted. And for the robot part of it, it's a futuristic military robot, you know, quite beaten up, but I still want the build to be clean. So I'm going to do the robot in an abstract way because I don't want to have a lot of, you know, detail in the robotic parts. I want to maintain a clean looking build. So for the color scheme, we're going to follow the motherboard. The motherboard is white, red, and silver, but I'm not going to actually add any more white to the build. And red will only be added as a very small accent. Most of the build will be silver, and there will also be some black. So you can see that we have some laser cut aluminum panel here. It's two mil. This is actually from another project, but some of this is going to work perfectly for this build. We also have this awesome piece of brass here absolutely beautiful piece of material it's four mil panel and I'm not sure if this is actually going to work for this build you know adding gold to the color scheme but if it's sandblasted it will look pretty cool you know it'll have that kind of sparkly anodized look to it so we'll wait and see if I end up integrating that now we can't use metal for everything because I want to have really thick parts that look like you know armor plating and if you go any more than three mil metal just gets incredibly heavy even if it's aluminium so that is where acrylic comes in. It's a great material for modding. It's lightweight, easy to shape, easy to use. You can paint it. So that's also where the paint comes in because we're going to be painting the acrylic to look like metal. So I have some five mil, three mil, 10 mil. You know, you get a 10 mil metal plate. Obviously it's going to be way too heavy and we can't add too much metal. And the other place the paint comes in is any steel which we can't expose such as the case chassis itself. I'm going to paint to look like bare metal. And so the main paints I'm going to be using is this silver flare, metallic silver, and also this DNA virtual chrome. This is incredibly expensive. It is such an awesome paint. And this looks like a full on chrome mirror finish. It really looks like real chrome, but it's a massive process to use it involves a lot of you know time and skill and effort so you'll get to see exactly how I'm going to go about that but also some black paint you know a lot of different paints here that we're going to be able to use the clear coat and everything else and the reason there's so much paint here is because I use 2k two pack paints so you need the hardener the reducer and so there's always a lot of products and I absolutely love painting now you know I've been doing a lot of it and once I got myself a really nice set of guns, a good compressor, a really good setup, anything that you are truly passionate about and you really, really want to do, you can become good at it in absolutely no time at all. So don't let anything hold you back. You know, if there's things that you want to do to be able to mod, if you really want to do it and you have a passion for it, you're going to be good at it and better than the professionals in no time at all. So that's just a brief insight to what I have in mind so far for this build, which is really not much because I have no idea what I'm actually going to do yet to the case. But that is because I wanted to leave that 
the thinking and the strategy that goes into modifying a case for this build log so that we can all do that together. The challenge with modding is not so much what you're going to do. You know, that's easy. You can come up with anything. You can say, I want to build a robot case with moving parts and hydraulic struts, moving panels around and, you know, changing the configuration during use. You can come up with the craziest ideas. The problem is how you are going to do it. And that includes knowledge, skill, the materials, the equipment that you have access to. So that is where the major limitations are going to be for most people, mainly, you know, amateur modders who don't yet have the connections and the access to a lot of good tools. There might be limits to the tools and materials you have access to, but there are absolutely no limits to imagination and creativity. If you have access to CNC machines, 3D printers and CAD design, then obviously you're going to be able to create incredibly professional looking mods that are really going to blow people's minds. But there is nothing like the beauty of something that is handcrafted, the pride that you can take in building it, knowing when it's done, that you built it completely yourself and also the fun that goes into building it. And there's also a different kind of thinking that goes into modding when you're just doing it with the Bare Essentials basic hand tools. A lot more strategy. You're always thinking about how you're going to do things with the limitations that you have. So in my opinion, it's a whole lot more fun. The next step now is for me to think about and design my basic layout where I'm going to be installing the components so that I can then decide which of the case components I'm going to eliminate. I'm not going to be needing for this mod. So I'm not going to go too crazy with the layout for this mod. All of the components are going to remain in their usual positions except for the radiator of the AIO, which would usually be installed on this top panel, which can fit up to a 420 millimeter radiator or the front panel, which can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator. I'm going to be installing it onto this panel and I'm going to cut ventilation through the rear side panel for the radiator. So knowing my basic layout and, you know, essentially what I'm going to be doing, I can now start to eliminate parts of the case. Now, the front IO, I don't like all of the extra cable mess. And there's very little that you can do with these cables. You can't shorten, well, you can shorten USB 3, but there's so many individual wires inside that it takes a lot of time. It's very difficult. But for this build, I'm going to be eliminating the, the front IO, the power and reset button, and I'm just going to be installing a single vandal switch somewhere on the modified front panel. I may not need any of the grommets because I'm actually going to install shrouds, cover panels, Basically, because we have this lifted section here, I'm going to be able to install a panel off here like this where I can tuck the wiring in behind it. So a lot of the grommets can probably go. I'm going to completely change the top panel of the case. So the Modjuvent covers, I'm definitely not going to need. 
I'm not going to need these, first of all, I'm not installing any 3.5 inch and also where they, they go, I'm going to be installing the AIO radiator. I'm still going to use these because I am going to install the SSDs on the back of the motherboard tray. I'm going to have a window in the rear side panel so that you can see them in some of the custom wiring. I'm still going to use the original fans, the fractal fans. I'll probably paint them, I'll sleeve the cables, but you know they match the fans that come with the AIO. So. I'll use the dust filter on the bottom panel because I'm not going to change the bottom panel, but the front panel, I'm going to not use that dust filter. I don't know yet if I'm going to use this front panel because what I'd like to do is just put a big piece of 10 mil acrylic on the front and then, you know, other pieces of metal and acrylic over it and, you know, cut holes in it. But I might be able to do something interesting with this front panel. I'll just wait and see. I mean, it's all plastic, so... You know, that I don't like. It does have a nice brushed finish, but yeah, we'll wait and see about that. The side panels, I'm going to install a, a much larger window in the windowed side panel, as large as I can possibly get it. The rear side panel, I'm going to install, as I mentioned, a small window, and then part of it will be ventilated for the radiator. So these are the only stock case components that we are left with. The SSD trays, I'm going to paint along with the case chassis. Same with the expansion slots, although I might actually leave them white as an accent to go with the motherboard and also the fans. For the fans, I'll come back to them later. I might end up painting either the blades or the frames. You know, I could do the blades in the chrome. That would look amazing, but bare minimum, I'll definitely be sleeving those cables. Now, whenever I'm doing a mod that involves changes to the internal component layout, that is always the part of the modding that I start with because obviously that is the most important part that the components fit and then everything else kind of works around it. So we are definitely going to start with the mod that we are doing for the Fractal Kelvin S24. Now I can start measuring up and finally start cutting into this case. Now you're better off not using the actual component as a template because you end up damaging it. This is a standard 240 millimeter radiator. So I have, you know, lots of templates available for this, but you can take a cardboard or paper template off it and do it that way. But I better leave this part of the build log here. So that sums up this video. Thanks for watching. And remember that none of this would be possible without our patrons. And a big thank you to the sponsors for this build.